Hi, Captain Ron here. I'm here with Corey Clark. Hey, we're just here to talk to you about real estate again out here in the Pacific Northwest, out in Olympia, Washington, and all through Washington State. Uh, we're just making a quick market update on uh, listings today. I guess everything we're seeing in the market, listings, what's going on with our sellers. I know we're both busy with a lot of listings lately, um, myself included, and Corey. And you're seeing them all on the market and it's just kind of done a mushroom explosion as one of my sellers said and she was excited to see that because it helps us because we're starting to get a lot of inventory which we need and we still don't have enough i think we're hit and miss but. yeah inventory is still it's sparse but we are seeing more but it's still sparse and there's just there's more buyers out there right now uh their buyers are settling in to the reality that interest rates are not going to go back to what they used to be down to that two and a half, three percent. Yep. So yep. they're settling in. We have the buyers. We just don't have enough homes still. Granted, we are seeing more homes come on the market, but we're, we're still just lacking with, with yep. what we have. And it's an interesting fact. I made a quick TikTok video on open houses and I collect information. Love doing open houses because you get all the information from all the buyers. You know what they're there for. I mean, one, they may be looky lose your neighbors, so fair enough. But the other option of with all the buyers is they're all there to buy. And so their main complaint is not enough inventory, overpriced homes that are coming on the market, and the interest rates. But now they're, they're coming back to reality of their understanding that these are the rates, so now it's time to buy. And I like to ask them, how long have you been looking? Some of them a year plus, a few, a few months here and there. And I think everybody's trying to get adjusted to this new lifestyle and everybody's finally starting to understand what we've been preaching for a while and a lot of people you've seen all the videos of buy now and refinance that is a reality and it may be one year it may be three years but buy now yes you're at the higher interest rate but you can refinance if it ever does go back down but if the interest rates keep going up you're i mean not you're in trouble it's just gonna be a higher interest rate you're paying more of the payment so i guess i'll bring it back to inventory with regards to inventory, we just don't have enough at all. Yes, inventory is coming on. Yes, we're getting more stuff. But everything we're doing, I'm starting to see stuff that's back to bidding wars. I just had a inspection of a wave. Are you kidding me? I've had a multi-offer situation. I had a 22 AD situation. And these, and I've been seeing these for the last about a month, month and a half, um, which is great news for the market here, at least in Pacific Northwest but it's just not enough. So if you're wanting to get on the market, yes, we probably will get flooded compared to buyers, but I don't know if it's gonna be enough of a flood. I mean, I, with inventory, I mean. Well, yeah, I, 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 right now, I'm not seeing that that's, that we're gonna have this overflow of stuff. Um, it's just been such a slow trickle. But yeah, going back to your comment about multiple offers, and I've had the same thing, and when I had buyers going into looking at places that were much more rural, I thought this is a shoe in like, yeah. we'll just make a good offer and we'll, yeah. we'll get it. And then it turns out there's five offers that are over <laughs> list price and waiving inspection. And it was like, what, you know, so it's like, what's going on here? It's a good sign for the market. It's, but it's getting back to that difficulty for buyers where we, we, we're going to have to be competitive, yeah. but, that's not to say that for a seller, we, we still need to be priced right because I am seeing homes where people are wanting to cash in or try to cash in on yep. what we used to have and it's not there. So you really have to be specific about your pricing. That's a huge point. Yeah, because yeah. if you're not if you're not specific about your price, pricing it for the current market, you're just going to sit. Well, and it makes no point again to even try to sell. And actually, I was going to bring that up because yes, we have no inventory, but that doesn't mean just slap on some bad house and charge a outrageous amount, no one's gonna buy it. So just, just be straightforward. What we're talking about is we have no inventory for good homes, priced right, and great locations. So if you have a home that's okay, okay location, this or that, and you price it right, fine, it's gonna sell because we have no inventory. But if you're trying to go back to, I mean, 2001 or 2021 market price, and you're trying to do that, we've dropped and it's not substantial. If you look at the numbers, and I can put this on here, everybody I follow, it's amazing with their numbers. We rose before pre-COVID 40%. After COVID and since 2021, we've dropped down about 
3%. So we've gone up 40%, we've dropped down 3%. So people are trying to go back, even with that drop to 3%, but they're trying to reboost it even further and higher, and it, it doesn't I, make sense. I literally showed a home over the weekend. The, in 2021, this home was bought high to the market, and it was, and now it's priced like 400 grand more than what, no than what it was. <laughs> And that wasn't the worst of it. And this is a beautiful neighborhood. It's a neighborhood that everybody wants to be in. 400 grand more. But it was way blown out. And the condition of the house was terrible. I mean, it was a huge house. It's in a beautiful area. Everybody wants to be there. But way overpriced. And then you see another home in that neighborhood that's been on for almost a year. And they're priced, gosh, like 600000 over. Like, I don't, I don't know what... <laughs> Well, and I think that comes down to one agents, if you can tell them. But I understand we have that due diligence to do what our sellers want. So if they're wanting to do this. But that's where I think the reality is going to start setting in. Where, yes, we have no inventory. But I would say, on average, my inventory of what I'm selling right now is 550, 500, 600. I have some higher ones at 900, 950, up to a million. But they have to be spot on. So this brings me back to something I didn't discuss with Corey because we were kind of talking about what we want to talk about in this market is the new gold rush is the homes. Like right now, what's the gold rush? I think the gold rush is location with homes that are not updated that you can come in and update and make a ROI on re return on investment. So you can come in, you can buy this home for 500000 put 50000 in, 100000 in, and now you're going to live in there five years have this amazing home and then you can turn around and sell it and have a great return on your investment. I think that's the new investment or the new gold rush because we just, we don't have any updated homes. We're not building any homes. And if we are, they're overpriced or they're good, but they're all flying off the market because builders aren't keeping up. Um, or we have people with new homes or really nice homes, but they're 400,000 more <laughs> and they're not even that nice. So the gold rushes, these people buying $550,000 homes, $600,000, $900,000 homes, but it's the gold rush of, yes, I can update that. I mean, $950,000 cash buyer. We're redoing the floors. We're redoing the garage. I mean, we had a list of stuff we're redoing, and we're paying $950,000 cash, but it was immaculate, perfect, but they're still coming in and redoing all the stuff they want to do to even update it even more. And so when you take that, I, I think that's kind of the reality of what's setting in now is, okay, fine, we have no inventory. The stuff that is good is a great location and it's priced right but still needs updates. Or it's great location, priced right but needs a full update. But the ones that are trying to just play the market, it's not going to work, at least in my opinion. No, and I'll just go back to being very specific to this market and pricing is so important because... If, if you're if you're still wanting to sell and, and generally speaking right now things are sitting longer than they were in 2021 yep. uh, even though we have a lot of buyers people are just taking a little bit more time to to buy so things are sitting on the market a little well, bit longer unless you price it right My, mine priced right both of them priced actually both sellers want to price it lower than i wanted to last th two of them not the third but last two both sold within two days multiple offers but that's that was them being smart and saying no, this is what we want. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Specific pricing to this specific market is yes. extremely important because I, I can't tell you how many homes I've seen lately that are way overpriced, <laughs> and they just sit. And I, I, I don't have one down from the street for me. I'm sorry. They yeah, I don't. I don't know if it's just that <laughs> they are not in a hurry to sell, which could be because I've been seeing people. Yep. Uh, wanting to hold on to their home that they bought in 2021 where they got a 2.5% interest and hold on to that home, use the equity and yeah. buy something else. Yeah. I mean, that's happening too. Or so. make it a rental. That's right. Turn it the, into a rental. One of the two. That's the other thing is they two and a half percent gold. Yeah. If you rent that house out, yeah. you're getting your mortgage paid for and a, and a uh, income. Let's, let's talk about this. We weren't, I, we weren't going to jump on this, but go ahead and talk about the summable loan. Jump on it just for a moment. Uh, I mean, that is huge. If you don't know what this is. Yeah. So in, anybody can do an assumable loan. It tends to lean towards investors. However, an assumable, assumable loan is something that you as a buyer can 
say, say, say the owner of the home that you want to buy has a FHA loan on it. You as the buyer, as long as you qualify with that homeowner's current mortgage lender, if you qualify with them, you can assume that loan that they have at the interest rate they had. So let's say, let's say they did get that 2.5% interest rate. Yep. You can take that over at this time, this day and age with the current interest rates, you can take over that, that loan at that lower interest rate. So, and you have to pay for what they want for the price of the house right now. So whatever they want to sell it for. I, if I had a 2.5 mortgage rate loan and I was going to let you assume it, I'd want a premium. So just a heads up, you're probably going to pay a little bit more of a premium for that home. I mean, as long as it's priced right and I pay a little premium, I would be okay with it at 2.5. I mean, right? Or yeah. And, and just as a disclosure, I'm not a mortgage lender. Ron's no. not a mortgage lender. I, this is purely just information that I've read and talked to lenders about. And, and this and is a very... we know we've had people using them, so they're using yeah. them. It's just, here's the hardest part of this. What we're saying is, we're, and we're definitely taking a tangent here, if you find someone that's willing to sell to you, neighbor, a buddy, a friend, is more likely what it's going to be, to be honest, because you're really not going to find this on the open market. But if you have a buddy or a friend that has a 2.5 mortgage rate, and they're willing to let you assume the loan and take over it because they're moving east coast, south, wherever they're going, jump on it. Don't let them list it on the market because once they list it on the market, yes, you can't assume the loan, but jump on it and say, hey, Ron, Corey, this guy wants to assume it. Can you help us write up the contract, get the lender in there, let's get involved? Yes, you have to use the same location where that mortgage is at as well. Of course, we're not mortgage brokers. We can help you figure it out and go through the whole process, but it's huge. You could assume that loan at 2.5%. You're not going to find this on the market again. It's going to be friend, neighbor, yeah. cousin. Hey, we're going to Florida. You are. Wait, what did you get your loan at? 2.5? I will assume and take over it. That's, that's more of how this is going to work. But it's a huge caveat if you can do this. And I, I literally have had two people call me last in the last couple of weeks telling me that exact scenario. Where like, I know this person. I've, they're basically family to me. They're older. They want to just. They don't want to have the responsibility of being yep. a homeowner, and they want to sell me the house. Yep. Assumable loan. There you go. So I would, I would jump on it. So that's that's one thing. It's it's every five ten years we have these new different alleys that kind of take you in real estate. This is a new one. Taking the loan for the interest rate, um, pricing the homes right in a certain market in this niche market, Pacific Northwest, West Coast. Our market is kind of, it's wavy. East Coast booming um south booming we are booming because we are so funneled and tight that we have no inventory no homes but our actual market is dropping uh, because of overpriced homes because of everybody moving from the pacific northwest unless you're actually coming here and so that's the reason we have no inventory so if you're looking to sell i mean we need the homes i'm not gonna take your home if you're wanting two hundred thousand dollars over <laughs> market value. I just, I don't have time. No offense. That's great. You go do you. Uh, <laughs> there's agents that'll, that'll do it. I think. <laughs> yeah. We're, I mean, you absolutely as a seller, you you use who you want to use and who you feel comfortable with. I know just for myself and probably speaking for Ron a little bit too, is like we're in the market to not waste anybody's time, ours and our yeah. sellers. And we want to represent you in the best way possible. And we know that the best way possible is to make sure that we are doing what the market is doing. Yeah. And so by doing that in the long run, it's only going to help your cause in selling yeah. and well, to get you the highest price. Right. And, I, and, I, and so don't take me wrong. I'm not trying to tell you list the market price and then you're going to get, it's going to make our life easy and we're going to get sold. What I'm trying to do is I will push it to the top limit that I think we can push it on the market value to get you the highest price. Now, if I'm wrong, or if we come to terms and we work together and we're wrong, we know we will know within a week right now. I would say we'll know within a week to 10 days. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have one option, lower it 10, 15, 20,000 to re-spur it back on the market and get it sold or hold tight. And then you're in for a 30 day hold, depending on if we get the right buyer for your home. That's where we're gonna push it. If you're wanting to push it 100,000 above that and it's out of reality, there's no point. You're wasting my time. You're wasting your time. You're doing yourself a disservice putting on the market. Now you have a black mark record that shows that you were on here and you couldn't sell it. 
they show it everywhere on Zillow and everything else. And that, everybody looks at that. Always. I'll tell you, every, almost every <laughs> buyer I've ever had was like, why has it been on the market for so long? What's or wrong with why it? Why didn't it sell? Why, why didn't it sell? sell? And <laughs> I, that, it seems like very small detail, but I tell you right now, yeah. everybody wants to know why is it, why is so it not sold? So if you're sold? trying just to see like a fishing expedition, just cast out and see if they get 100000 over, we probably, I, at least for myself, and I'm probably say for Corey, there's no point. I mean, yes, you can fish with whoever you want. I get it. But why? Because now if you actually do need to sell next year, now you have that black mark. doesn't make sense. I get you'll still probably sell it if the market takes off. But realistically, what we're looking for is sellers that really want to sell that we can help push to get the highest price. And if you price it right, like my last few sellers that have all sold within two to six days, um, it, the last three actually, and the other one was nine days. We priced it right. We made adjustments if we needed to, but we priced it right in both of the last two bidding wars, multiple offers. And it was just, here we go. And this is what we were new. And we pushed it and it worked out both times. Amazing. And this, is, this has been the last few months. I've been week after week after week doing this. So if you're actually wanting to sell, yes. Um, if you're wanting to test the market, I'll, uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I just keep repeating myself. I don't know. It's no, just, it, it just, te testing the market could be fine. But again, just know if you're trying to truly sell, if, that, like, if that's your motive is to sell, I, I, I don't know that I would recommend that. I, I just, you, the longer a home sits on the market, the, the bigger uh, black mark and people just want to kind of steer away from it and if you have a nice home, there's no need to, to do that if you truly want to sell. And it... So another point that we're going to bring up is we are getting a lot of people starting to transition again. So I'm starting to see a lot of people go to different states, um, come from different states, go to different states. Mostly I'm seeing people move out. The catch is two things right now that I'm running into is one, rentals. We are still extremely short on rentals. So, <laughs> right? Are you seeing that as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, no rentals, so our rental prices are high. We have no rentals, so if you're an investor and you can find a home, great. If the cap rates and everything else work out, good on investments. Um, there are some stuff off market that, I mean, everybody can talk about. Everybody has something off market. Any agent you call will be like, oh, I know this or that. Catches, does the numbers compute? So if you want real numbers, let us know with investments. We do that. Corey and I do that constantly with investors and cash and money. So that's not a big deal. Let us know because we then have the renters. I mean, there's so many renters. It's I, like I'm just driving me crazy. Yeah. I, every day I see people saying, if you know anybody that has a rental for this, this or this, I yeah. mean, it's every day. So, I mean, they're, they're out there. It just So one, we need rentals. Two, investors have all cashed out on their homes in the last, I would say, last year or two. And I've was a big part of that. I helped them all cash out. Um, problem is we took away all those rentals and now we have no rentals. Uh, so we do need rentals Two, with everybody moving. I'm seeing a big flux of people moving to the South or warm or wherever they're going, retiring, everything like that. Uh, the catch is those homes are flying off very fast. Next problem with that is, is we just don't have enough of those homes. So it brings us back to if you're wanting to sell and you have a good even, and I shouldn't say even, if you have a cookie cutter, if you have a nice neighborhood, if you have something that's phenomenal that you know can sell and you're looking to make that next step and you're not looking to kind of go around the city, because if you're going to sell here and then transition the city here, it's going to be tough because now we're going to be back to bidding wars and uh, finding that home that with that, we, that we're there. asking that we need right now. <laughs> so if you're looking to move somewhere that's out of city, out of state, call us. Please let us list your home. I think that's the biggest thing we need right now is just good single family homes, nice neighborhoods, clean, ready, priced right. You're ready to cash out because if you bought anywhere within the last even two years, but three to four years, you're making a well good of chunk of money. Uh, if you're taking that money and you're going to put it down on another home, wherever you're going, probably for half the price in Florida, Texas, Arizona, wherever you're going, enjoy the sun. Um, but good for you. But that's what we're looking for. Because if you're looking to cash out now, now is the time. I, I don't know how else to say it. Well, and, and I literally have a home that I'm about to list with somebody that did buy at the height of the market. And they've put oh, a little sweat point. equity into yep. it. And we're about to list their home. And so I'm excited to see what kind of 
profit they've made off of this because they, what they buy it for. Uh, I don't remember. Sorry, I'm throwing Core under the spotlight. No, I, I don't remember what they bought it for, but um, it's a decent area, and it'll it'll be interested. To, I'll be interested to see how it shakes out, and uh, you know what they because they got low interest rate, and we'll we'll see what it. kind of uh, yeah, return. Nice to see the numbers. Yeah, yeah. and that's what I want to see is. Um, those numbers and maybe I'll come back with an update. I'm, I'm proud of Corey because he's starting to learn with numbers and baselines because I love baselines numbers because this year has been all baselines and it, every baseline I keep doing just keeps going up and up and exceeding my expectations on returns which yeah. is huge so uh, that's why we have the confidence to say if you're gonna list and you want some good returns and numbers are right and you have a place you're gonna buy or move to great if you're looking to just sell and then kind of hunt around the area I almost don't want to do that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I will always sell your home if you want to, but I'm going to be, uh, it'd be tough for you to sell here and then keep hunting around here because we just don't have anything, at least yeah. in Olympia and surrounding area, Washington, anywhere else. And then, of course, our prices are higher than any other state. Really, it's crazy. I mean, there's a few states that compare or that are higher, but anyways, yeah, we can go on and on about real estate. You can sit here and come. Come to the office. Come sit down. Talk with us anytime you want. Yeah, uh, that'd be fun. We're ac <laughs> we're actually working on, on doing maybe a podcast. So that's the podcast great, is next. You got any great ideas? Let, let us, us know. know if you want anything. We'll talk to you. All right, Captain Ron out. Corey, later.